guys, it's Melinda, and today we're going to be looking at a very rare amphibole called Fluororichterite. And this one is really special to me and to those of us uh, here in Ontario uh, because it, again, is quite rare and also because of the occurrence we have that is actually quite special. And all of the specimens you see here today are from that occurrence in Essenville, Ontario. Uh, and we do stop at that occurrence um, during my tours. And uh, we're able to collect some smaller uh, chips like this. If you're lucky, maybe a piece like this. Um, these nicely shaped crystals are pretty tough to get out of their calcite. Uh, but it's definitely a fun challenge for sure. Um, so if you come on a tour, you can, uh, you know, have the pleasure of adding something rare to your collection. And if you're far, far away and you're not sure you'll ever have that opportunity, um, I do have small little uh, chips and pieces. If you would like to add one to your collection, let me know and... Uh, we'll figure out a way to get you a little piece. <laughs> all right, so uh, like I said, all of these specimens are from Essenville, Ontario, um, in the one location where uh, it has been uh, assayed, so we know uh, chemically exactly what these minerals are. We're not just guessing, they have been tested um, and found to be the rare amphibole fluororichterite. So typically you will find them stuck in this beautiful cream calcite. So I'll start by showing you um, my two pieces that still have substantial calcite on them. They are really beautiful crystals. Um, at a distance they might appear to just be, you know, a typical black amphibole, uh, but they are not. They're very nicely reflective um, from this location, very nicely uh, formed um, and sometimes even terminated. And they aren't just simply black. They almost have a silvery translucency to them that makes them really beautiful and definitely differentiates them from um, typical black amphiboles or horn blend but we'll get into that a little bit later. Isn't this a beauty? Gorgeous. Piece with some huge crystals. And the size of these crystals is what makes this location extremely special. Huge, huge, huge crystals. <clears throat> and I actually have a really large specimen um, that is very fragile, so <laughs> I've left it on the shelf. So I figured I have enough here to show you to give you a sense of what it's like. Um, and the little bits of mica you're seeing here are phlogopite, which is a type of mica. Really beautiful, almost like bronzy, coppery sort of color. Really large crystal there. Isn't that a beauty? Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And on this side, there's a little more, there's calcite and a little more uh, phlogopite, that phlogopite mica on there as well. The area has been um, heavily picked over because it's something so interesting and unique. Um, people have been digging this uh, newly discovered spot since it's been discovered. Um, <laughs> uh, and so it's it's quite difficult to find like large sized crystals like these, like these. Um, typically at this point you would have to 
uh, purchased them from a local collector, which is where I got my larger pieces and larger crystals. Um, typically what we can find now as rock hounds or, you know, uh, amateur geologists are these uh, smaller ones and the real uh, joy of it is to try and get a nicely terminated uh, or, you know, well-formed specimen out of the calcite. It's really, really difficult uh, to get them out without them breaking. So that's the challenge. But on my tour, um, there is a lovely, the lo lovely local gentleman that I purchased these from. Um, he often lets us stop by to look at his collection and allows people to purchase if they're interested. Of course, there's never ever any pressure to port purchase anything on my tours. Um, but you know, it's a rare opportunity, so I like to offer it up. This one I keep protected, but I just love that tiny little crystal sticking out of the calcite. Gotta keep that one protected. <laughs> Too neat. showing some of the crystals on their own now. This one has a little bit of phlogopite mica. That's why I put it there. But it is, it's rough, but it is terminated on the top here. You can see it goes into a point. And these amphiboles are not shaped like quartz. They, they don't uh, terminate in the same way quartz does. I have some better shaped ones to show you how they terminate. All right, so um, Flora Richterite was first reported from the Ilmen uh, Nature Reserve in the Ilmen Mountains in Russia. It was recognized by the International Mineralogical Association in 1994. So it, it only became a recognizable um, mineral in 1994. Uh, which to me is not very long ago. Uh, yeah, so it's a relatively new uh, mineral, which adds to the excitement surrounding it. Um, its name is derived from its fluorine content and its relation to richterite. So at the type locality in the Ilmen Mountains, fluororichterite occurs in carbonate veins in amphibolites and ultramafic rocks. However, in the Essenville occurrence, where all of these specimens can be found um, in Wilberforce, Ontario, it occurs in a limestone lens within a niece and is associated with phlogopite, like I keep showing you, this beautiful mica here, um, and calcite, this cream-colored stuff, really tough stuff to break the crystals out of. There we go. I love this specimen. Uh, so the crystal broke and you can see the calcite kind of filled in those broken pieces and so um, it you know kind of remains. Obviously I would I'll be delicate or, or fragile sorry. I'll be careful with this lovely piece um, but yeah it seems that the calcite at this point is holding this crystal, crystal together which is is something I absolutely think is, you know, fascinating. <laughs> I love this one. So it has also been reported uh, in areas in Russia, Germany, Italy, Spain, and China. So the Richterite group minerals are defined as sodium calcium amphiboles. Uh, when it comes to fluororichterite, there's also fluorine included. Um, the color of uh, Richterite crystals is often brown to brownish red, rose red, yellow, gray brown, as well as pale to dark green. And Richterite is a sodium, calcium, magnesium, silicate mineral belonging to the amphibole group. Uh, if iron replaces the magnesium within the structure of the mineral, it is called ferro-Richterite. And in this case, when the fluorine replaces the hydroxyl, it is called fluororichterite. These are the types of hunks 
that you're more likely to be able to collect yourself. These are what I started with and I was happy to have them and still happy to have them. Um, and then when you go back, you just, you know, you kind of utilize a little more time and patience and get into a technique to be able to pop them out just right. This was a purchased one. Nice big chunk with a nice face. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so like I've said, the larger sized crystals are only found here in Ontario, Canada. Um, or I may have alluded to that. I don't know if I said it just yet. Um, and that makes this location super, super special um, and makes our flora richterite specimens even more rare. Um, while crystals of flora richterite do occur around the world, they are typically very small, sometimes microscopic. Uh, whereas here, they are large, solid, and beautifully shaped. Um, many people mistake typical black amphibole, also known as hornblende, as flora richterite. Um, and that happens notoriously here in Ontario because people know of flora richterite and they know it's, you know, a rare amphibole uh, and that it's a black amphibole. They just, um, you know... <laughs> you kind of wishfully think that that's what you've found. Um, if you haven't collected it from this specific area, then there's a possibility that flora richterite is not what you've found. <laughs> um, there are a lot of really beautiful black amphibole crystals um, in the nearby areas, but they do not look like this whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> structure maybe, but color no sheen no um this has a very silvery translucency and i i i really don't think a camera can do it justice i think you have to have to have handled one and experienced how the light interacts with it it's very very different than your typical black amphibole um much more beautiful and i'm assuming the more I don't know, crystal-like look of these are due to the fluorine content. That's just, you know, an assumption. <laughs> I haven't found anything that, you know, backs that up, but um, I have so much experience with other black amphiboles and they're just very different from this. I love this one. So this one is broken here, but it is terminated. See this line here is the termination. And there we go. So you can see how it terminates very differently um, than something like quartz. I love the simplicity of it. Gorgeous. These ones are also terminated. This one's actually double terminated. See that? Oh, it's a very, I don't know, it's got a gemminess to it that you don't typically find in black amphiboles. Stunning. Gorgeous. This one's terminated as well. My mom helped me collect a bunch of these on my tour last year. <laughs> Not double terminated. She kind of had a flow going. She was able to get some out. Beautiful. Pretty lucky. <laughs> there we go. Gorgeous. And that's some that I protected and the terminated one this one too
Get this terminated. Check it on this side. And last one. This one's terminated as well. One last peek at this one. There we go. Aren't they gorgeous? We're so lucky to have these here. <laughs> I really love them and I think they're special. I've got like a strange pride about them. <laughs> I think it's so cool that we've been able to collect these here. Super neat. All right, everyone, there is my collection of rare fluororectorite, which is a type of amphibole. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. See you next time.